everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan and this is my husband Jim and we have some some truth, some powerful truth that we're going to share with you from the Word of God today. But before we get into it, we are going to talk about partnership. You know, and I think it was our very last broadcast we were talking about this and how many years have we been on television, Jim? No, 19. I could, somebody told us the other day it had been 19 years. I couldn't believe 19 it. years. And we never have invited people to come alongside us and help us, which that's really kind of stupid that we've never done yeah, that. Yeah. But anyway, nevertheless, because of the uncertainty of our times, which kind of tripled and multiplied this year, things got really crazy, didn't they, folks? But anyway, we thought, you know, we're, our program is available in mainly Arkansas, Louisiana, and Missouri. Right. So we would like to expand, yes, we would. And, it, and it would take some money to do that. So we're inviting you to come alongside us and help us. And um, what, what for? Why would you want to be a partner with us? Well, one thing is it's powerful. It is powerful. Because if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 10, right. to flight. You know, how, how much better is it for two to walk together and be agreed? That's right. You know, it's, it's just, you know, it's monumental what happens when people come alongside and help one another. That's right. Okay, so that's one reason. And another reason would be that, you know, we will include you in our prayers every single day. And as our partner, we want you to be praying for us. That's right. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying $20 a month. That's not much. Maybe even $10 a month would be great. You know, just any any amount, really. Just whatever you can just do. Just whatever you want to do. Whatever you think the Lord's telling you to do. Yeah, but, but anyway, you know, when we connect like this, I think there's something that happens, spiritually speaking, that we don't even really grasp. That's right. You know, and so we do believe that we could expand and do more. And so... We're asking you to help us do that. You know, the thing about it, we had someone in our church yesterday that is a ministry that we support. And uh, he he was uh, uh, telling of things that had happened mm -hmm. in, in his ministry where he was ministering to people mm -hmm. and uh, how people got born again and people yeah. were healed and all kinds of things. And, and he said, you know, he says, the, the good news about that is, <clears throat> is that because y'all support me, that's right. You are partakers of the benefits of what happened. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the same way with this. Right. So, you know, everybody can't go. Right. And everybody can't do what we're doing. That's right. But everybody can, can give. Everybody, right. everybody can everybody give. Can. Okay. So there's information there on the screen for you to use. And um, we would appreciate it yes, so we much. Yes, we would. Okay. So we're continuing. This is the longest series we've ever done. I believe, I believe you're right. It is. We've been talking about redemption, and this is number seven. That's right. And, all right. Redemption. You know, I think, and I think I said this on one of the programs, that we don't understand what happened when God created Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. and then they sinned. But, I mean, when God created Adam and Eve, you stop and think about this. The, he, he created a perfect place for them to live. Right. Every need they would ever have was already in, there. It was before there he created in the garden. Them. Yeah. And so they sinned and God drove them out of the garden. But the good news is, is that God's plan of redemption was enacted right then and there. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right then right. and there. Mm -hmm. Now it was, it was a, a while before it, before it came to fruition, but the plan was in motion. That's right. The plan was in motion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have and enjoy life until it overflows. Flows. That's God's plan. Think, mm -hmm. See, I believe this, and I believe Scripture backs this up. Every, everything that Adam and Eve would ever need was in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Before before God created them, it yeah. was already there. Yeah, He did everything first. Everything, and so, and so there was no reason for that garden except for them. For them, yeah. I believe that when you and I receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, mm -hmm. that God puts inside of us 
everything we will ever need mm -hmm. is already there. I believe that too, Jim. And what we have to do is we have to learn how to appropriate what God has already done. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we've talked about this many, many, many times, especially even going back and, and you describing your own new birth experience. Yes. And well, just, just tell us about it. Okay. Because it's so good. It is good. I mean, when I was, the summer that I was 12 years old, okay, in mm -hmm. August, mm -hmm. uh, my mama saw to it that I got born again. She invited our pastor from First Baptist Church. His name was Dr. Walter Warman. Mm -hmm. He came out to our house on a Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. and he led me in the sinner's prayer, and I got born again. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the thing is, I mean, I was spiritually illiterate. Okay? Yeah, but, but right there, when that happened, God put everything in you. Everything that I would ever need, he put on the inside of me. But you didn't now, know. I didn't know it. You didn't and know. I, did, I didn't even know. I, I really didn't know what had happened other than the fact that I knew that, that I was going to heaven. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Mm -hmm. from that. From that moment, I've never doubted the fact that I was going to heaven. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know. that I, I, I had no concept of, of everything that God had, had done for me in Christ Jesus. I had no concept you didn't, of it. You didn't have any and, idea. And, and, you know, this is, uh, well, let's see, 12, it's a long, long time later. I'm yeah, still learning. A few years later. Now, I have learned a lot about mm -hmm. what God did for me in Christ, but I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. Okay? You, I, don't, I, I'm, I know that I will never learn it all. Right. But, it's, right. but, it's, but I'm striving to learn it all. Mm -hmm. You know that you know, and, and see when you when you look at it like that and realize, you know, like you comparing the Garden of Eden and everything was there to the new birth, everything is there. Everything's available. It is. And you know, you know how do you appropriate well you know if you stop and think about this, in the book of Genesis in creation, mm -hmm. the Bible said, and God said, Let there be light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where okay. did that light come from? There wasn't anything. Mm -mm. So where did the light come from? Well, I believe mm -hmm. that it came from the word light when God said light be. That light became because of what God said. Mm -hmm. the, the light was in the word. Mm -hmm. And so. Praise God. That's the way it is for us. That's good. Yes, that's it. Okay, so we're going to get right into this now. And so you see, you know, there was this garden. Right. These people, and the people were perfect. The garden right. was perfect. Everything was perfect. And then one day, they made a bad, bad choice. They made a, 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 they really made a choice, choice that yeah. changed eternity right. that day for them and, you know, all those that followed. Okay, so anyway, but like Jim said, that same day, God's plan was put in motion. It was put in motion. That's for, right. for what he was going to do. He, right. you know, and you have to understand, this didn't take him by surprise. He knew. No, no, no. You no. know, we, right. we think sometimes we do things and we think, oh man, I bet God can't believe I did that. And he knew. That's he right. knew all along you were going to do it. You just surprised yourself. That's right. you know? That's right. But anyway, so, you know, you can look and you can see what happened. Then Noah came along and, you know, That's then right. the flood happened. Well, let's, let's just put this in here. Okay. There's, you know, there's two reasons why Satan wants to destroy all this. Mm -hmm. Number one, he seeks to destroy the knowledge of God in the earth. And if you just look around today, that's exactly what's going on. That's still what's that going on. That is exactly on. what's going on. And in, in, back in this time, he sought to destroy the righteous line. I think that's still going on. That's still going on. But, but he was seeking to destroy mm -hmm. the knowledge of God in the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is still happening today. People are trying to take God out of everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, there, there's a scripture in Hosea about how people perish for lack of oh, knowledge. Right. And it's talking about that. Understanding, you know, the things about God and yes. His righteousness and His goodness and His mercy and His love. You know, that's just, you know, if, if we can just look around, we can see where those things are trying to just, you know, be just marked out right. you know it's That's just right. not good 
But anyway, so then the flood, and then there was the Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel. Let's now, talk that's about that. Uh, Tower of Babel is interesting because um, it, and it's, it has an interesting point to it. It really does. We find in Hebrews, I mean, excuse me, in Genesis uh, 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 11, 2, it said, it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Now listen to verse 4. Okay. He said, and they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over all the earth. Now, what they said was, let us make our own way to heaven. That is what they were that's saying. What, that's what they were saying. Yeah. And so, you know what? Did you know that since then, a whole lot hadn't changed? That people still think that you you got to be good enough to go to heaven. Yeah, that's right. And that's so sad. It is sad you know, because, because you, you can't get good enough. No, you can't get good enough. And, you know, the whole thing, and we talk about it, usually we open our program with it, the word called faith. Yes. <laughs> you know, because that's how everything is instigated in the kingdom of God. It's always by faith. It has nothing to do with how good you are or how wonderful you can perform right. anything. It's just nothing to do with it. So these that's people right. are doing well, that. You know, here's the thing about it. I mean, we, we're all guilty of this. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, if, if something happens and you have a need come up, okay. well, well, your first reaction is, well, I need to read my Bible more. I need to pray more. And mm -hmm. that's probably true. You yeah, probably you probably do, do need to do but, that. But that is not what's going to get you what you need. Mm -mm. What's going to get you what you need is faith in God faith in God's Word, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's what I, mean, I that's believe. That's just the way that yeah. works. So if, if, if we're saying that we need to, to pray more and, and read our Bible more, we're, what we're saying is then that, that if we'll do more of that, then God will do something for us. Mm -hmm. But that's not the way it works. That's right. Uh, it works because of faith in God and faith in His Word. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to Get back into this thing about Babel, okay? Right. And I'm going to read you a scripture. All right. This is Genesis 1. No, it's 11. Yeah. And it's verse 7. It says, Come, let us go down there, and this would be God. Right. Confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. And so the Lord scattered them abroad there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused their language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them over the face of all the earth. And now we're going to talk to y'all about why. Why did God do that? Why was it so important to confuse their language? All right, well, let, let me go back here. Let's read verse 6. Okay. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are, are one. And they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Yeah, see, I wondered why that wasn't here. Now, why, mm -hmm. why would that be true? Because they were speaking the same, same language. language. They were in agreement with one another. Mm -hmm. Well, there is something powerful about Man, that. Man, that is, that is like... Oh, if you've never heard this amazing truth, yeah. you need to buckle your seatbelt because this is so good. I've got a scripture in uh, Matthew. Okay. Okay. And this is Matthew 18, 19. And of course, this is what Jesus said. He said, I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth. Now, let's understand agree is, is, is more than saying, oh, I agree with that. It's not no, that. No. It's, it's, like, it's like music. It's like harmony. It's like everything flows together. It's like you're really connected. You mm -hmm. really and truly do have the same, you know, belief right. or agreement. Okay, so he said, I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. And that is like, oh my goodness, if you didn't have a reason to go to church, now you do. That's right. Because he says you got to gather together. Yeah. He says if any two or three, you know, so agree. 
harmonize. Yeah, I mean, make that, music in, in, in the that spirit. Means, that means if you go back to what we read in, in Genesis, mm -hmm. that means that you're saying the same thing. That's right. You're saying you're the same thing. You're saying the thing. same thing. See, like, it's not like, okay, yes, there's an, I, I'm, I agree. I set myself in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to believe. And then I walk away and say, well, you know, can you believe that she actually said that? that, that? No, that's, mm -hmm. that's not agreeing. No, that's, that's lip service. That's, that's lip service. And, man, we are good at that. That's right. But, uh, but if I say, all right, Susan, I agree with that, mm -hmm. this is what we're going to stand for. And from that moment forward, all I'm doing is I'm speaking what the Word of God says about that particular subject that you brought up. That's right. And when you do that, what did he say? He said, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Right. That's so good. It is powerful. It is very powerful. Okay. And, you, you know, I, I remember this from someone uh, somewhere. They said, the place of agreement is the place of power. It is, and it is. And you think about that. If you, if you reference this verse and then you go back and you look at what happened in, at the Tower of Babel, you have to understand that when you agree, when you come together and you unify yourself, you know, with a cause, with a purpose, with a plan, it's there's nothing else like that. That's right. And see, that's the, th mm -hmm. that's the thing about it. If, if you're married, that's the most powerful place of agreement that there mm -hmm. is. You know, and see, you know, that's even in when you read about our prayers, you know, in the New Testament, and it especially talks about a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want your prayers to be hindered, that's right. you know, because you've got a family yep, that's <laughs> that right. you're, you're praying for and you want to see good things happen, right? So right. you got to stay united. you got to stay in harmony with each other, and you've got to agree. That's, that's right. That's good. That's right. So here we are. We're talking okay. about redemption, about the fact that God's plan was to redeem man and bring man back to the original place that mm -hmm. Adam had. Yeah. Right? That's right. Okay, so, so the, plan, the plan is in motion. Mm -hmm. Now let's skip down to a man named Abraham. Oh, righty. Okay. okay. Abraham was a moon worshiper. Think about that, a Chaldean. He was a, he was a moon worshiper. So in Genesis 12, here's what it says. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And you, shall, all families of the earth, shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now, right there, mm -hmm. see, he was not fully obedient. Because he took Lot with him. He, he did. Said, he that said, was, leave your family. Yeah, and he took him. And he, but he took Lot with him. And, and, and we know that after Lot and Abraham were separated, mm -hmm. that's when God really, really began to move. Yeah, that's right. And look at this, this next sentence. You know, some of you are sitting there thinking, well, yeah, isn't that great for Abraham? But look at me, I'm an old. And it says... Right here, it says and Abram was like 75 years old. Mm -hmm. No reason not to go into ministry that's, ever. That's right. You know, I, I like the thing about about uh, Colonel Sanders and Kentucky Fried Chicken. He was yeah, 65 years old. That's right. And when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's really never, it's too, never, late. Late. never, never too, too late. Never too late. Never too late. All right, so here's what happened. God made a promise to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he also cut a covenant with Abraham. That's so important. Mm -hmm. He cut a covenant. covenant. You know, this covenant, I saw down here where you had um, the word, I don't know how you say it, C-H-E-S-E-D. Hasid. 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 Yes. Okay, and that's used as the covenant word. You know, when you look things up in their original language. Anyway, he said, it said that especially of the covenant between God and Israel, it's due to the history of God's dealing with his covenant people. The continual waywardness of Israel has made it inevitable that if God is ever going to let Israel go, his relation to his people must be in the main 
be one of loving kindness, mercy, goodness, right. and all of it entirely undeserved. Right. That's what, when we talk about covenant, that's what we're talking about. You know, we, we mentioned a while ago about how you get hung up on this works mentality. Yes, and you right. think, well, you know, I can do this, but you can't. It, the, you must come into covenant relationship with God. That's right. That's right. See, like when you and I got married, we, we thought we got married. And that mm -hmm. was all there was to it. I mean, I didn't realize. No, you had no think, idea. I we didn't realize, know what we were I doing. I don't think we realized that we were entering into a covenant. No, we didn't know. But, I mean, no. how powerful is the covenant? Now, there's, here's just a few things here. In Dr. Trumbull's book called The Blood Covenant, okay? Okay. He says this. He says, from the very beginning in every nation, blood seems to have been looked upon as preeminently the representative of life as indeed, in a particular sense, life itself. The transference of blood from one organism to another has been counted as the transference of life with all that that life includes. The intermingling of blood has been understood as equivalent to the interming intermingling of natures. Two natures, thus intermingled by the uh, intermingling of the blood, have been considered as forming thenceforth one nature, one life, one soul. Now, that's pretty good. And see, we don't have any idea about that. Right. You know, un unless unless you're, you're that person that, you know, you got born again yeah. and you got real curious and you started looking things up, you would be aware. But by and large, most people just don't. You don't understand. You don't know that. That's right. That's right. And sure. then, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's amazing. That's right. I mean, uh, there, there's a... Uh, a uh, 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 passage of scripture in uh, in Second Samuel chapter nine, and we've referred to it before. David and Saul's son Jonathan cut a covenant. Yeah, they did. And and the the covenant was, you know, if one of us dies, the other one will take the other's children and treat them as if they were your own. Mm -hmm. And so, in in Second Samuel chapter nine. David has, has been fighting and, all, and everything is all right now. No more mm -hmm. fighting going on. And David asked, he says, is there anyone from Saul's family, now listen to this, mm -hmm. that I may show covenant kindness to? Mm. Now see, David understood covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, yeah, Jonathan has a son. Yep. And so David said, well, go get him. So they went and got Jonathan's son. His name is Mephibosheth. They brought Mephibosheth in. And, and, and listen to this. David said, Mephibosheth, I'm going to restore to you everything that belonged to your grandfather Saul. And from this day forward, you, Mephibosheth, will eat at my table. Now, why did David do that? Because he had a covenant. Mm -hmm. Did Mephibosheth deserve that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it wasn't about Mephibosheth. It was about a covenant that had been that had been done years before that David was going to to uphold. Mm -hmm. You know, see when when you see what happens is in covenant relationship with God, everything that God has is now given and available to me. That's right. And everything I have is now his. available to him. Yeah, and you know, you know, when you were kids and you watched uh, westerns on TV, mm -hmm. you know, remember they were, they were always becoming blood brothers. Uh, yeah. When they did that, we didn't know what all the ramifications were. But when whenever they joined their families together like that, it was that way. Mm -hmm. What you know, like if, if they went to war, they went to war with them. Right. You know. And so, in a covenant relationship, obviously, the weaker one is the one blessed the most. Right. Because then that weakness is overshadowed by the powerful union that's been made with the one who has it all, right. which, who would be God. That's right. 
And so, you know, that is like, it's just, so, and see, we're not aware, most of us, oh. that, you know, that's, that's what happened when, you know, we confessed Jesus right. as our Savior. And we don't, mo most people, when, when they get born again, have no idea what you say. Other than, I mean, they do, they think, well, I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. But they have no idea what really happened. And so you have to look back to the cross and you see where Jesus shed his blood. Yes. That was the covenant right, right there. He did that so that anyone, and it's all based on faith, who would believe on him mm -hmm. could be born again. Right. Let's take a minute here. Maybe, maybe you're watching and you've never, you think this stuff that y'all talk about, I don't even, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, if you're not born again, if you've never received Jesus as your Savior, you need to do it right now. Because it's, well, just, it's based on belief. Let's, let's pray. Mm -hmm. I want you to say this after me. Say, Father. Father. I come to you. I come to you. And I know I'm lost. I know I'm lost. I need help. I need help. And I can't help myself. I can't help myself. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. 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 Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Save me. Save me. Make me new. Make me new. Use me. Use me. If you prayed that prayer with us just now, the Bible declares that you have been born again and mm -hmm. you have a covenant with God. That's right. If you prayed that prayer with us, we have a little book here by Kenneth E. Hagan called The New Birth. We would love to send it to you absolutely free of charge. Mm -hmm. You can call us, email us, write us. All that information is on your screen, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll send it to you absolutely uh, 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 no charge. That's right. And we do want to remind you about partnering with us. Yeah, do that. $20 a month would be great. Yes, $10 a month would be good. Whatever, whatever, $5 a month. Whatever you know. God would speak to you. But you join with obedient. us because we want to expand. That's right. These days are days that need the gospel that's right. that's, <laughs> preached. That's exactly right. You know, if you, if you have prayer requests, we would love to pray for you. We have people that we can come, come alongside that they will pray for you. And, and I believe that God answers prayer. So you, you call us, write us, email us, whatever. That's and right. remember this. Jesus said, said, if you continue in my word, word, then are you my disciples. disciples. You should know the truth, and the truth will set you free. free.